Eduard Bloch, born on January 13, 1872, until June 1, 1945, was a medical doctor practicing in Linz, Austria, until 1907. Bloch was a physician of Adolf Hitler's family. Because Bloch was an Austrian Jew, Hitler later placed Bloch under special protection after Austria's annexation by the Nazis. Before we continue with the video, please like, share and subscribe to see more videos like this. Bloch was born in Fraunberg, today the Czech Republic, studied medicine in Prague and then served as a medical officer in the Austrian army from 1899 until his discharge in 1901. He was stationed in Linz, where he opened up a private medical practice. His practice was located in Barocker Haus at Landstraße 12, where he also lived with his family, his wife Emilie and daughter Trude, born in 1903. According to Ernst Korev, later mayor of Linz, Bloch was highly respected, especially among the lower and poorer social classes. It was common knowledge that he was ready to see patients at any given time of the night. He made the visits in his cap, wearing a conspicuous white-brimmed hat. Like most Linz Jews of the time, the Bloch family was very well assimilated. The first member of the Hitler family to see Bloch was Adolf Hitler. Hitler had fallen seriously ill in 1904 and had become bedridden due to a severe lung condition. Because of this, he was allowed to stop his schooling and return home. However, after reviewing Hitler's records, Bloch later claimed that he had only treated the teenager for minor diseases, colds or tonsillities, and that Hitler was neither robust nor sickly. He also stated that Hitler had not had any illnesses, let alone lung diseases. In 1907, Hitler's mother Clara Hitler was diagnosed with breast cancer. She died on December 21st after suffering severely under daily medication with iodoform, a foul-smelling and painful corrosive treatment that was common at the time and was administered by Bloch. Because of the poor economic situation of the Hitler family, Bloch charged reduced prices, sometimes taking no fee at all. The then 18-year-old Hitler granted him his eternal gratitude. I will be eternally grateful to you in return. This was evident in 1908 when Hitler wrote Bloch a postcard assuring him of his gratitude and adoration which he expressed with handmade gifts such as a large painting on the wall which according to Bloch's daughter Gertrude Krenn was lost in the course of time. The doctor later recalled that in his entire career he had never seen anyone so sadly filled as Hitler, who had always had a close bond with his mother. According to Rudolf Binion, their deaths helped trigger Hitler's hatred of Jews, since Bloch, a Jew, was unable to cure her cancer. The facts, however, speak against these theses. Bloch had charged a relatively modest fee of 300 crowns and renounced an extra charge for the many house visits and treatments with iodoform and morphine. When the family went to him on December 24, 1907, to pay the bill and thank him, Hitler even bowed to the doctor with the words, I will be eternally grateful to you. In 1908, he wrote him a card thanking him again for his efforts. As late as 1937, Hitler inquired about Bloch's well-being and called him a noble Jew. Bloch also apparently had a special fondness for the Hitler family, which may have saved his life. In 1937, Hitler inquired about Bloch from visitors from Linz in Berlin, and when he stopped in Linz in 1938 in the course of the invasion, he immediately asked Hofrat Adolf Eigel about his good old Dr. Bloch and called him a noble Jew. After the Anschluss of Austria by Germany in March 1938, life became more difficult for Austrian Jews. Bloch was at first restricted in practicing his professions, like all other Jewish physicians. However, a short time later, he realized that he seemed to receive preferential treatment. He was allowed to keep his inner city apartment, did not get a J-stand on his passport and did not have to mark his practice as Jewish. However, the Gestapo confiscated the two thank you cards written by Hitler. Although Bloch tried, he never got them back. At the Gestapo he was told that his case would be handled from Berlin. The National Socialists subsequently wanted to make Eduard Bloch an honorary Aryan, which would have allowed him and his family to continue living in Germany. But Bloch refused this rare honor, unwilling to betray his faith. As a result, the Gestapo contented itself with keeping him under surveillance. 
After Bloch's medical practice was closed on October 1, 1938, his daughter and son-in-law, Bloch's young colleague, Dr. Franz Krenn, emigrated to the United States. However, since living conditions were getting worse, he decided to emigrate as well in November 1940. The 66-year-old Bloch then wrote a letter to Hitler asking for help and was subsequently placed under special protection by the Gestapo. He was the only Jew in Linz with this status. Bloch remained undisturbed in his home with his wife until the formalities for his immigration to the United States were completed. Without any interference from the authorities, they were able to sell their family home at market value, which was highly unusual given the distress sales of emigrated Jews at that time and the expropriation of Jewish property through the Reichsfluchtsteuer. In addition, the Blochs were allowed to take the equivalent of 16 Reichsmarks out of the country. The usual amount granted to Jews was only 10 Reichsmarks. He also published his recollections of meeting the future Führer in Collier's Weekly, in which he painted a remarkably positive picture of the young Hitler. He was not a bully, nor was he untidy or rude. Bloch said, as a teenager he was quiet, well-mannered and neatly dressed. He waited patiently in the waiting room for his turn, then bowed like any 14 or 15 year old boy as a sign of respect and always thanked the doctor politely. Like many other Linzer youths, he wore short leather pants and a green wool cap with a feather. He was tall and pale and looked older than his age. His eyes, which had inherited from his mother, were large, melancholy and thoughtful. This boy lived to a great extent within himself. What dreams he dreamed, I do not know. Bloch also said that Hitler's most striking characteristic was his love for his mother. Hitler was not a mama's boy in the usual sense, but I never experienced a closer bond. The love was mutual. Clara Hitler adored his son. She allowed him to have his own way whenever possible. She admired his watercolors and drawings, for example, and supported his artistic ambitions in contrast to his father, at what expense to herself one surmise. In his memory, Hitler was the saddest person I have ever seen when informed of his mother's impending death. He remembered Clara Hitler, Hitler's mother, as a very pious and kind woman. She would turn in her grave if she knew what had become of him. After the death of Hitler's father, Bloch says, the family's financial resources were tight. He mentions that Clara Hitler lived with a tight budget and did not allow herself the slightest extravagance. In 1940, Bloch emigrated to the United States and settled in the Bronx at 2755 Crescent Avenue, New York City, but could not longer practice medicine because his medical degree from Austria-Hungary was not recognized. He died of stomach cancer in 1945 at the age of 73. Barely a month after Hitler's death, he is buried in Beth Dairy Cemetery, Section D, Block 3, Elmont, New York. That's the end of the video. Please like, share and subscribe if you liked it.